weirdos. So. Black is night, rest us from our sight. White as light, mighty hectic, make it right. I myself am strange and unusual. Cast a circle, spark some incense, and grab a cup of tea, because it's time for the Cousins Coven podcast. I'm here with my cousin, and we're here to talk all things witchy, paranormal, cryptid, aliens, and beyond. My name is Sharon, a self-proclaimed witch and seeker of the truth. And I'm Wendy. I am armed with a wealth of experiences and inspired by anything paranormal. Today, we're diving into cleansing. But first, it's time for Cauldron Topics. All right. The rising popularity of witchcraft. Nice. I think that's very topical. Yeah. So why do you think that's happening? Why do you think more people are being, I don't know, maybe more acceptive of witchcraft now than they were in the past? I don't know, honestly, where it stems from. Maybe it's just that nowadays subcultures are connecting more on social medias and you can kind of fly your freak flag and find your little tribe easier. But that's just through my lens. I notice a lot of stuff on Instagram, just in the fashion, the jewelry, the kind of makeup that's being worn. It's um, always like witchy vibes. And whether they're practicing or not, they I think they show respect for the... The true nature of witches. Sure. I think some of it might have to do with education, too, just because with social media comes a little bit of education where maybe, as in the old days, they were like, oh, you're a witch just because you're using scented oils. But today we're like, oh, scented oils, man, you could use that peppermint on your forehead because you have a migraine. You know what I mean? Yeah. More information out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it encourages one another because when we see one person rocking it and and learning, you, it's inspirational. You want to do it too. Sure. Yeah, I for one have seen it just like in my everyday life too. Like I just got back from an anime convention, as you know, and when I was there, there were more booths than I've ever seen with like <laughs> witch artwork and witch um, like teas and herbs and incense and there were that's just not that common like it's normally all very anime based but I just felt like a big magic vibe this year right isn't there an anime based on witches there are plenty there are plenty one of the big ones right now is called my little witch academia it's very harry potter inspired but it's like an all-girls school and the characters are really cute and and adorable yeah and she rides around on the little broom right she does yeah yeah Yeah, that's so stinking cute (laughs) okay let's do another one okay raising your vibration with sounds that's something i would like to start making my own sounds it would be really cool to learn like the singing bowls i think yeah i um i mean i know that i've used vibrations for a lot of different things i mean i should say i've used those sounds to raise certain vibrations so let's say i have sinus issues i can listen to a certain vibration and it will release the sinus pressure how do you find the right frequency or, or tone? I just searched in YouTube. I actually follow this group, Meditative Minds, on there. And I tell you, they have every single vibrational sound that you can think of. But all of the different frequencies, sometimes they add in chanting. And so for me, when I listen to their music, whatever it says that it is, that's how it it works for me. And so if you want to raise the frequency in your body, they have something for that. When you listen to this, like you've mentioned before to me that you need like headphones. Do you think that's necessary? Yes, absolutely. I think you have to have a quiet space. It's the same thing as meditation. So I have these Skull Candy headphones that I wear. Um, they're, they're noise canceling. So I don't hear anything around me except for those sounds. So sometimes my family will be doing whatever they may be cooking dinner or running around the house screaming but i don't hear them because i have these headphones on with the sounds and i'm so focused into what they're 
providing me that I don't I don't hear anything else. That's awesome. I have been meaning to buy them, but I just keep putting it off. So I've only been listening to the tones like either while I sleep or while I'm meditating kind of next to me, but I have not had headphones yet. And does it work for you without the headphones? I think that it gets me there, but it's never 100% concentration. I'd like to think that a headphone would help. Yeah, it's definitely good for me anyways when I'm meditating. I know we talked about meditating a little bit last time feel like the vibrational noises or sounds, whatever you want to call them, really help a lot. I was listening to one just like a day ago, and it was like under 10 minutes. I think it was um, just a chakra cleanse. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was the one you sent me or not, um, but it started making the most obnoxious ringing noise, and I loved it. (laughs) It was just like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> and it was just causing me to just kind of like everything in my mind quieted. And all I would think about was that frequency. And I could just feel it almost vibrating in my head. But it was a really good feeling. When I'm in a really good meditative state and I'm listening to the chakra cleanse music, I can actually feel my body aligning. Mm, it's kind cool. of like your spine aligning in a way it is what it feels like to me. I, I don't know any other way to explain it than that. Are you making sure to have really good posture when you do that? Yeah. And so like I can feel myself being pulled in a certain direction to where I might not be aligned inside myself. Mm -hmm. I need to memorize the chakra colors better because that really helps me when I start visualizing each one and that color kind of just like filtering out any negativity and then shining brightly. Right. Going from your feet up. So yeah, that first one is always digging into the earth, getting yourself grounded with the earth. Oh my gosh, maybe I've been doing it wrong. I'll always start from the top down. Oh, I always do from the bottom up. I'm going to start that because honestly, I love to ground myself first. So that's smart. Okay, so unless you have anything else to add, I think we will move on. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So today we are delving into cleansing. Have you ever been somewhere and thought, whoa, bad juju? Or have you ever felt like you might have some sort of hex or curse on you? You might even feel like bad things are constantly happening to you. So let's talk about some ways you might be able to get rid of this. I'm going to kind of talk about my background with cleansing. Um, I actually started doing this when I was about 15. Um, Now, my family was extremely religious, so I felt that we had a spirit in our house, and actually I had seen several spirits, and my mom had asked for our pastor to come over and bless the house, and this is how I learned, because they got me completely involved into it. So the way that I do it now is a lot different than the way I was taught, but it still kind of has the same basic meaning that you want to get that spirit out. You know, we had those spirits in our house and the situation was that we made this anointing oil. It was basically just olive oil with some herbs in it. Um, I don't actually remember anything other than oregano. I I know we used oregano in there, but anyways, we would use the um, oil to bless every doorway and every window. So that um, it would keep the house inside safe and force the evil, so to speak, spirits out. We would anoint it with a cross. And then the pastor that was there would say some words, typically reading from the Bible, which is so different than what I do now. But like I had said, it's it's still kind of the basic meaning. Yeah, just a different approach, I guess. Yeah, very different. So do you want to talk about your background with cleansing? Um, I've never really cleansed houses that much. The most I've done it is just in the same principles that you're taught to like cleanse your magical space before you do any magic. So whether it be burning sage, I can do that throughout a room. Um, and that's about the max that I'll do. But when I do sage a room, I like to go to each wall and do... Um, a pentagram and there's different ways that you can start the star and it'll be a banishing pentagram or an invoking pentagram so I'll do it like backwards to be a banishing pentagram each time on each wall until I've like completed the room or if there's an extra space like a doorway or a window I'll get that and I'll just kind of take my time and then when I feel like I have done the negative kind of sucking out the negative stuff I'll go through and do it with an invoking pentagram And so it's not that elaborate. I never have dealt with any spirits. 
Okay, well, cool. So I will say that I do this thing called a scenty pot. Um, so I, this is kind of like my first step. I will make this scenty pot. And I put an actual recipe on our WordPress, our little blog. So you can find that recipe at cousinscoven.home.blog. And that will kind of give you a basis of what I put in there. But basically it's a it's citrus scent. So I like to put lemon, lime, sometimes orange. Then I will put in some sage and some other herbs. And then I just let that burn on the stove. Of course, I add water too. I should say that. <laughs> Don't just burn the ingredients on the stove. Please make sure to add water. You get like um, water boiling, then you add the ingredients? Um, no, I put in the ingredients and then I pour water on top. Okay. And then usually when I'm pouring the water on top, I'll say a blessing. So I just, in my head or out loud, depending on where I'm at, I can say, please um, bless this house and it, and send out any negative energy from this space. And then I usually start the boil process. So you can have the scenty pot going for 30 minutes at a time. Um, sometimes, depending on the type of oils or scents that you use in there, it can become a little overwhelming. Um, I know that some people that I've done cleansing for have are sensitive to certain scents. So make sure that if you're cleansing an area and the homeowner is there to find out what they may be allergic to because you don't want to put something in the environment that could cause adverse actions. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's kind of my starting point. So that's a start aromatherapy for the environment and kind of cleanses out any negative energy. Yes. Yeah. It cleanses out the negative energy. So for me, it's all about just brings in such a good aroma and that citrusy scent is one of my favorites anyways. So to have that going, it just kind of gives me this almost little pep in my step. Mm -hmm. I have like an oil diffuser and it did come with like a citrus orangey scent. Do you think that could be a... a a substitute for a scenty pot is an oil diffuser? Absolutely. Yeah. Any sort of thing that you want to do, as long as you give it a blessing, it will work. Oh, I should bless my my diffuser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I feel like anything that you bless is going to work. So somebody out there will probably disagree with me, but that's all right. <laughs> so when I'm actually going to start doing the process, I use white sage, which is something that's that has been around for centuries. It can come in several different forms. I've used actual sage stick at little fairs or at a, we have this little kind of local witch shop here and I've bought stuff there too. You want to make sure that the sage that you purchase is actual sage. You don't want someone to pawn off something that they're saying is sage. So make sure it looks like sage and that it smells like sage. Mm -hmm. But that stuff can leave kind of an abrupt scent behind, which I know is one of the things that um, that spirits don't like. So a lot of people use that sage, but I've heard complaints from homeowners saying that it leaves kind of this burnt smell. When will that burnt smell go out? So then I switched over to using white sage incense. Mm -hmm. And the white sage incense, it just leaves that sage scent. It doesn't leave that burnt smell that sometimes you get from a sage stick. So I really like to use the incense more than I do the sage stick. But that's a personal preference. I'm not saying that you have to do it that way. There's definitely a difference. When you mentioned that the spirits are reacting to the smell, so just as it affects us, it does affect the spirits as well? Yes. So what is yeah. their reaction to someone saging a house, you think? I don't know. I think that they're like, oh, I shouldn't be here. I mean, this is just from my experience. I I'm, I haven't been a spirit, so I don't know for <laughs> sure, but from <laughs> from what what I've heard and seen, it makes it seem like they don't want to be there. Right. Is there any kind of uh, instances where that's happened where, where you started saging a house and you've seen activity going on? Yes. Yeah. Actually, in my own home, um, not in the home that I'm at now, but a previous home that we lived at, I had a, everybody leave the house and I was saging. And then I was downstairs doing the sage part because I started downstairs. And I think that was kind of my error. I should have started upstairs and worked my way down, but I could hear and see um, people running around upstairs, even though there was nobody else there. Were you seeing shadows? Yes, shadows. And then hearing footsteps, people running around, heard 
want a door slam. So it was kind of like, oh, shoot. (laughs) So I stopped what I was doing and went upstairs and started saging from the top down. So that's like the opposite of how you were cleansing yourself and your chakras. (laughs) Right. I know. Right. (laughs) So what's the logic do you think of a house being upstairs first? So I feel that it's because they don't have anywhere else to go. If you're starting from up, they have to go down or out. That's the option. But if you're downstairs, they can go up or out. Mm. Once I'm actually starting the house cleansing process, I before I start the scenty pot, I prepare myself. So when I say that, I usually sit and meditate for at least a half an hour. During that time, I'm thinking about I don't want any negative energy to attack me while I am doing this process. So I kind of say a little protection spell to protect myself. That way I am free and clear to help the people at their home without carrying any of my baggage into that situation. Oh, it's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> Cause I don't, I mean, everybody has their own sort of negative energy at some point or another. You can't be a hundred percent. Well, unless you're maybe a monk, but <laughs> I feel like you can't bring yourself a hundred percent into any situation, but you can at least try to, to prepare yourself. Right. And that shield sounds like a defense from anything bad to you and, and vice versa. Because you don't want to bring that home. Mm-hmm. What if it decides that it doesn't, that it'll leave, but then it wants to follow you home, which I have had happen before. Oh, wow. For me, I've never experienced anything and I've just seen other people talk about it. So it's it's incredible hearing like firsthand accounts of witnessing these, this type of event. Sure. I kind of am in this philosophy that because it's been around me my whole life, that it's almost like it seeks me out. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm open to it. Yeah, they they seem to know when people can see them. Like mediums, people who are sensitive to seeing ghosts, they probably attract them like a magnet. Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'll prepare myself, do the scenty pot. And then when I get into the home, um, if if it is a two-story home, like I said, I do like to start up and then go down. You'll want to bless every doorway and every window, every corner. So you'll kind of start in one area and work your way around. So let's say you're in an upstairs area. You'll want to start from whichever side you choose. I usually, for some reason, instinctively go to the left when I'm at the top of the stairs and then work my way around. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I feel that that's just whatever you prefer to do. Then I'll just go along and bless each entryway. Sometimes I say it out loud. Sometimes I say it in my head. And the words I say is the negative energy is not welcome there. Because even though they might be spirits that have passed on, it could also be just negative energy. Something left over from a fight, something left over from something that happened on that land years ago before the house was built. It could be any, you know, a number of things that is the negative energy. So you want to ban that from being in there anymore. Do you think like the spirits when they hear someone, I don't know, using such a command that they fear that? Like what would make them leave just because we're asking them to? I don't know, actually. (laughs) I don't know. Um, I know a couple of times I've asked if they would like me to help them move on, um, which sometimes I'll get a response and sometimes I won't. The one or two times that I have had them say that they would like me to help send them on their way, I usually get kind of this pull and I'll see a light saying, you know, they would really like to move on. And I somehow just help them do it. (laughs) So speaking out loud or something, do you feel? Um, Both. Well, I will hear it, but it doesn't mean other people around me will hear it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's just something that I don't want to use the, it's kind of like in ghost whisperer when she knows things, you know, that other people don't know. So it just kind of comes to you in your head. Like that right. was planted there. But it's usually not my voice. Ah, okay. So that's how I know the difference. I know what it sounds like. I mean, everybody kind of talks to themselves in their own head. Maybe they're pepping themselves up or, or trying to figure something out and they're talking to themselves. Well, it's not my voice that's talking. Right. So, and then I'll get this feeling or this pull, kind of in a, like an electricity. Most of the entities you've encountered, have they been just lost or confused or do they feel like they're coming from an evil place? I feel like not all of them are ghosts. Like I had talked about before, sometimes I just feel like it's a negative energy left over from a situation. So maybe that, like I'll use this for an example. I was helping um, a cousin of mine. She is a property manager and she had an empty apartment and she was like, you know, I feel like the people that were here before were not so good. Could you help me 
bless this area. And I was like, sure, I can do that. And so I went in and, and I could see remnants of things that had happened. So I could tell that they abused their children. I could tell that there was drug use. And it was really sad um, to feel these things, this leftover negative energy. But I was able to clear that space out. So, you know, that wasn't a ghost by any means. Um, but it was definitely an energy that was left behind wow. that could affect the next people who live there. That's really powerful that you, as a human being, you put such a stamp in just the walls around you with your energy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So when, when you go through the room, you just do the cleanse with the sense and the sage and the words. And do you just get this feeling inside when it's over that you've done it? Yes. And sometimes I have to say, um, we'll do loud noises. I forgot to mention the fact that you need to open up all the windows in the house, which kind of sucks in the winter time, but that cold won't last forever. So make sure to open up all of the windows. That way the spirit has somewhere to go. Granted, I know windows are not a complete barrier, but there's something about the movement of air that can disperse energy. So it just kind of, I don't know, ushers them on their way. So have the windows open. You can make some loud noises along with it. So I've had people that wanted to get children involved, their children involved. So I had them bang pots and pans because it's kind of an activity for the kids. You want to explain the situation of why you're doing this without scaring them. Mm -hmm. And, but also to get them involved. And then I've had people who let me just use like vibrational tones. And there are, like I had said before, I was using that one meditative mind on YouTube that they have an actual good house cleansing vibrational tones on there. And so I will use sometimes those vibrational tones that kind of helps me. Oh, there are some different religions, I believe over in India that they believe in the vibrational tones as well. And they will use these loud noises to cleanse a space. It's a whole different way of cleansing that maybe I would use because I don't even think they say a full blessing, but they use these tones because they believe it will send the spirits along their way. Mm -hmm. And I think that has something to do with that spirits and negative energy are just energy. So why wouldn't we use sound to fight off that energy? Right. Yeah, I think it's important to override the stagnant energy in a place and fill it up with the happy energy. Exactly. How often do you think one should just cleanse their house in general? Oh, in general, to cleanse anything negative that's happened, I would say maybe every six months or so, depending on the situation. You know, you may be in a toxic relationship and you might have to do a little bit more frequently or get out of that toxic relationship, So, which I know could be hard to get out of. You may be in a situation where you're living in a house that you don't feel comfortable in anyways because it's not what you want. So maybe that's making you feel negative on the inside. Or depending on where you work, you could bring that negative energy from where you work home. I do that sometimes. I'll take my negative energy from a customer that I encounter or just a situation. And sometimes I would just come home in a bad mood, but I've been a lot better at not doing that lately. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because you don't want that. I mean, it's kind of like poison. Yeah, I think it helps to come home to pets sometimes. They're very therapeutic. <laughs> yes, for sure. Agreed. <laughs> so maybe every six months or so, or the changing of the seasons. That's usually my go-to is a changing of the season or if something negative has happened in the home. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, once I work from the top down, usually at the end, once I'm all finished, I, depending on how many people I have with me, I will have them actually meditate in that space and tell them that if they meditate together as a family for know like a week or so it will help bring in good vibrations and it'll also help them become closer together definitely i i can't imagine a family meditating together <clears throat> excuse me that sounds so lovely like i would <laughs> love if my family would meditate with me yeah i can't get everybody to do it i can usually only get one person at a time <laughs> that's still really cool though you have a very conscious uh family yeah i have this one person that i did a cleanse for um she had purchased something from like Goodwill or something. And when she brought it home, she didn't think about it. She was like, okay, this is the cutest little table I've ever seen in my life. I just absolutely love it. And she started refinishing it. And then weird things started happening in their home. So that this was a time when I was like, okay, so you brought something into the home that wasn't currently there which kind of reminds me that if you purchase something used, which 
I do all of the time, but I try to bless those things. Even if it's a clothing, I try to bless it and say that the spirit is not welcome in my home. So that way that they know that they can't come in. They're very respectful that way. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if it's just something like they know their boundaries, maybe. So this cleansing of used goods, is it something you can just do quickly before you get in your house, hold the bag in your hand and bless it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would like, okay, you're not welcome to come with me. I just purchased this. You can't come in. That's it. The end. Like I don't go through, I'm sure that there are other people who might want to do something a little bit more in depth, but I just go by the philosophy of doing something simple. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, by keeping it simple, you're not overcomplicating a situation. So she had this table and things started happening? Yeah, things started happening in her house. And so I was able to go over and just help her cleanse. It was a really good experience. Um, We were able to get it and the negative energy left after. Or I shouldn't say it was negative energy. I did figure out it was an older woman that she just was attached to that particular item. Oh, it's probably her table for years. And she like, she was probably like, oh, it was supposed to go to my family. And then uh, it didn't. They just got rid of it. So what kind of stuff would, would happen? Or how, what did she start feeling in the house? Just she would feel negative, like she needed to not be there. Like it was almost like something was saying that she shouldn't be there. Um, she was feeling like, or she could hear sometimes sounds. Um, it was just kind of this overall dread feeling. Uh, I wonder if the lady was like a, someone who's disapproving or being judgmental. I still think it might be, I mean, my first instinct really was that she wanted that table to go somewhere else. So it may have been a situation she was, she was like, I'm not supposed to be here, but it was inflicting on the people who who were alive and then living in the house. So it was like, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. But really, she was probably thinking this isn't supposed to be here. This table shouldn't be here. Okay. Wow. But, yeah. So it's kind of intense. And But typically, like I have said, it's just negative energy that I'm feeling more than anything else. Um, I don't come across a lot of spirits when I'm cleansing as much as I do the negative energy. Would you say that it's that most spirit energy is just a residual negative feeling and not necessarily like an entity? Yes, I think so. That makes it feel like it must be more common than I realize. Yeah. You know, I mean, have you ever been into a place where, you know, you just go in and you're like, whoa, something feels so dark here. Why does it make, why do I suddenly have these thoughts when I've never had them before? Mm, I I guess I'm not as in open to it, or maybe I am too internal to realize it's an external force making me feel that way because I have such anxiety. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> maybe I wouldn't even pick up on it. I'd just be like, man, what's wrong with me? <laughs> You're like, why am I feeling this way? Yeah. So now I'm going to start thinking about that. Like if I purchase anything used, which again, I do all the time as well, I'm going to be smart and cleanse it. And you would think even maybe newer items have some sort of juju. Yeah, it could be possible. Like depending on, you know, was it a handmade product? Depends on what the person who was making it put in there. I know that years ago we had this really old, probably 1940s wooden plaque and it was kind of like a polished wood. And we had it up in our bedroom for years Every time I went over into that section of the room, I literally felt like I wanted to throw things. Hmm. Like I was so angry um, and I I couldn't actually figure out why. And I had a friend come over and help me figure it out because even, even with my abilities, I still have struggles. So for me, I was like, okay, I need some help. So I had a friend come over and we were looking at it and she's like, man, I think it's this, I think it's this wooden plaque. And sure enough, that's what it was because we got rid of it the next day and I never had that feeling again. I wonder how she honed in on that. Um, I think she was a little bit sensitive like me. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of nice to have another person (laughs) who could help me out. Yeah. I don't know if there's something that people who aren't intuitive can do to solve their problems or if we just have to cleanse everything all the time. (laughs) I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I think of it like, think of it from a different religious standpoint. So let's say you believe in praying constantly. So it's no different than when you pray before you eat a meal. Mm -hmm. 
that actually is a nice like thing to do. I never thought about that because recently I have been more conscious about where my food comes from and maybe the condition of the animal. So I'm not eating certain things, but if you bless it before you eat it, maybe that helps the animal somehow. Right. And I feel like it could also help with um, digestion, you know, and that you're using it, using it for the right purposes. Like maybe you're using that energy rather than just wasting that energy, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I try to think of my relationship with food as that's my life force. It gives me my energy and try to eat healthy. Right. It's like manna. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I... I guess I could go into, well, what if, what if the spirit doesn't leave even after the cleansing? Well, it might be something a little more than a regular everyday spirit or bad energy. So this means maybe it's something evil. And I've only come across this once, you know, when I was growing up, we had a really negative spirit in our home. And now that I'm looking on it. Um, it may have just been a negative energy, but to me, it was at the time, it was an evil spirit. Um, the area that we were living in used to be a big Indian kind of, not burial ground, but there was a lot of Indian activity back in the day. Do you mind saying like what state or city for the listeners? Yes, the Willamette Valley. Yeah. So it was basically that land in West Salem there. There was a huge battle. Uh, as an older adult, I was like, you know what, I'm going to look into this because I used to have or I used to see Indians in my home and I couldn't figure out why they would always want to show themselves to me. But it turns out that they were just murdered in that land. Um, Mind blown. When... So you would see them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I would see them as a child. I really saw them. One time I went into the bathroom and there was one sitting in the bathtub and the curtain opened. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> one of my biggest fears of opening a shower curtain is something being back there. Were you like surprised, frightened? What kind of a person did he look like? Like a Native American. So older man. Yeah, an older man, no facial hair, really long black hair that was braided. He had kind of on these tan hide type pants that I didn't see. He didn't have a shirt. He never had a shirt on. He didn't have the stereotypical feathers that you would see like on movies or whatever. I didn't see any feathers. Was he would, and would he notice you seeing him or what was the interaction like? It was kind of like he saw me and I saw him and then that was it. Mm. Would he disappear? Yeah, he would just disappear. I'm, I wasn't scared of him really. I think in the beginning I was, but then as time went on, I, like I probably saw him a dozen times when I lived at that home, but it only scared me in the beginning. And was he someone you think was trapped because of the way he was murdered? No, I think his bones were on that land because later on um, we had been digging up, you know, kind of rototilling to make room for a garden and we found bones in the back. And did they look super old? They did. Yeah, we didn't have them tested. I don't think, I mean, that was the 80s, so. <laughs> right nowadays, would you call the cops? Yeah, I think nowadays you'd have to call the cops about it and then they'd probably have them tested to find out where they came from or was it an animal or human or what. To me... Because I was young and not educated and I just had to go by what my parents were telling me. They were saying that they looked like they were human. And when I touched one, I did get that impression. But that was just my impression. So after you uh, guys got the bones, do you think he moved on or did that not help his process at all? I didn't see him again after that, now that I think about it. So I would say he moved on. That's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I was talking about um, it might be something a little more. So the negative energy, I kind of went off on a tangent by telling that Indian story. But really, I was thinking, what about that negative energy? So I hate to use evil spirit. I, some people believe in demons. Some people believe in like negative folklore kind of things. Right. Um, I'm not saying that I fully believe in that, but it may be that you have to cleanse the space more than one time if it's that much of a negative energy. Like, I feel that's how it was living in a place where some Indians were killed. You would have to cleanse that space multiple times to get that negative energy out. But regular, everyday negative energy, probably just one time to get rid of it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I would almost think you could do it maybe monthly, like every full moon or something. 
Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And every time you cleanse your space, you should cleanse yourself in some way or another. So some people have different ways of cleansing themselves. Maybe it's through fasting um, and meditating at the same time. For me, I don't do the fasting part, but I do meditate every day. And then once a month, I try to meditate for a longer period of time. So when I say longer period of time, I'm meditating for like four hours in the middle of the day. That is long. Yeah. I would love to do daily meditation. I was trying to do that and then I just stopped doing it every day. I need to get back into it. Yeah. It's easy to fall out of because you're like, oh, well, I have this to do and I have this to do. But I did write something in the blog about that. um, Just that if you have time to fool around on social media in the nighttime, then you have time to meditate. Yeah, you just have to make time for it, and you'll yeah. be thankful for it when you did. I know I always am, so. Right. Um, I feel pretty talked out about this, but I feel like if you have any other questions, I would be more than happy to answer. I think I'm good. I always get you sidetracked because when you mention, like, any kind of <laughs> spirit, I'm just like, what? <laughs> You're like, boom, little explosion goes off in your head. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know, how does this work? So... <laughs> But I always appreciate you diving into it. Like I'm just, I can see like an Indian man in the bathtub and it's, it's pretty crazy. (laughs) Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad I could share that because I actually have all of these stories inside of me that need to come out and I'm glad to share them with all of you. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure for anyone who has similar gifts, it's nice to hear that perspective that someone else is going through it too and that they're not alone. Yes, absolutely. All right, so join us next week when we will discuss Bigfoot. I know Sharon's really excited about this one. I believe. (laughs) I believe too. Okay, so send in anything that you would like us to talk about, and we will add them to the cauldron. Also, thank you so much for listening to us. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Follow us on our blog at cousinscoven.home.blog. And you can email us any questions, comments, suggestions to cousinscoven2 at gmail.com. May you find happiness in your heart, love for yourself, and join each other. Blessings to all.